So I'm now going to start installing the Xorg set of um, binaries to give us a GUI to work with. So I'll just find that in the book and it's under section six graphical components and graphical environment. So let's jump straight in here, see what it says. Um, yeah, so most of Xorg is all of this lot, but there'll be other external libraries and probably other dependencies that we'll be picking up on the way. Um, some information there about the graphical environment in Linux. So there's a bit of more information about Xorg 7 here. Um, it replaced something called, um, I think it was Xorg R116 or something, I seem to remember. Um, in fact, I think there is a reference to that to give some sort of compatibility for older programs somewhere um, as we do the installation. So, um, basically the difference between this and the previous version, it was modernized to produce like a well, as it says here, an auto tooled modular build system has many, many, many tiny little um, components, uh, which reflects the modularization of XOR, previously the bigger programs, but fewer that made up XORG. Um, so it says to assist with installing all these numerous, well, it says there's over 100 packages here. Um, and to assist with, such, assist with such a large, large task, install wget. Well, that was the first package we installed once we were in BLFS proper. Um, sudo is also a good idea to have available, though not absolutely necessary. Um, it says here about downloading only the necessary packages, but obviously you need to work out what you need. So what the BLFS book recommends is just to install the whole lot. Um, and to use sudo and recommends to use the no password configuration option so that you're not asked for the password all the time so I'll just check to see what settings I've got yeah it's asking me for the password so what we can do with that is if you do via sudo and go down to will be this option here. Um, and all we do is copy like basically what's in this line here, just add that in to that position, save it. So now if I come out, so I'll have to wait for it to time out. If I log out and then go back in again, it should force the time out. So if I now, now do sudo su minus, um, okay, is it because it needs to be on the wheel? I should do. Um, I can't remember how we got this working now. Um, yeah, is it because kernel text is in the wheel group right okay so what we need to do is uncomment this line i think that should do it so i think this is saying that all yeah so this line here without the no password allows any members of the group wheel to execute any command um this is the same thing but it won't request for the password so let's log out again. Uh, show back in kernel text. Now sudo su minus. Hello, oh, okay. Was it doing something wrong here then? Um, Let's try 
nice to, would you have to log off? I wouldn't have thought so. Actually, I'm not sure how this is working because uh, user privilege specification. Let's take a look at sudo again, see if there's any hints there. All oh, right, so that's no, I thought I'd done that, and it obviously hasn't. Oh, I see, it's it's being done in a different configuration file, so I'll put this back and then edit this configuration file here. So by putting the No password here, hopefully that will do it. So this must be overriding what's in the via sudo file, so um, it's not how I've normally used this, which is why it's thrown me a little bit. So let's try accessing that again. Yep, that's better. Okay, so it's got to be in that file. So that file overrides the main vice sudo configuration file. So that's something worth worth remembering. Uh, normally on Gen two and Debian, I think it is, is the you just edit the vice sudo and make the changes there, and it's instant. So uh, quite what the benefit of doing this here in this separate file, I'm not sure, but that's the way LFS do, does it. So we'll we'll stick with that. Okay, so that's sudo set up for passwordless um, access to the super user. Obviously, that could be seen to be a potential security problem. So if that is a problem, you might want to change it or not change it at all or change it back when you've finished your session, maybe. Um, take something to bear in mind. So setting up the build environment for Xorg, um, as of uh, following, s yeah, so this assumes also that we've done the configuration bash shell startup files, which we've done initially. We've set up all these scripts because um, these scripts have got various environment variables and functions that point at certain locations. And some of the scripts that we're going to be using here um, and some of the configuration rely on those configurations that have been set up earlier. So if you didn't do them, um, either you're on your own or I advise you to do them and carry on following the instructions as they are. Um, so it says, as with the previous releases of X Windows, it may be desirable to install Xorg into an alternate prefix. This is no longer common practice among Linux distributions. The common install installation prefix for Xorg on Linux is user. There's no standard alternate prefix, nor is there any exception in the current revision of the file system hierarchy standard for release seven of the X window system. Alan Coopersmith of Sun Microsystems once stated that Sun we were using user X11 and plan to stick with it. Only the opt star prefix or the user prefix adhere to the current FHS guidelines. Now it says here the BLFS editors recommend using the user prefix. It used to be the case in prior um, BLFSs. I'm not sure when it changed, but it used to be the case that they recommended installing it under opt. And certainly when I used to use LFS, which was almost 20 years ago, uh, when I used to use it as my um, regular desktop environment, um, it was installed in opt and it allowed me to update update xorg um, without having to update the whole of linux from scratch um, as it was just a case of installing to the new environment and then setting symlinks to point to the new version 
but now the BLFS editors recommend using users, so we'll stick with that. Uh, there's obviously a reason why they recommend it. I presume it may be mostly because other distributions are installing it that way, but I don't know. So we'll export this XORG prefix to user. Obviously, if you want to do ops, you'd probably do something like that, maybe. Um, but as I say, that's down to you because that's not what's recommended by the uh, editors. Throughout these instructions, you use the following configure switches for all of the packages. Create the XOR config variable to use for this parameter substitution. So we'll export that variable as well with those settings. So we've got two new variables now, environment variables. We've got XORG prefix, so we'll just check that, and XORG config. And you can see the settings that we've just set are being recalled when we echo the value of them. Now it says to create an etc profile.d XORG sh configuration file containing these variables as the root user. So we'll do that and we'll set it to executable. Um, sorry, I did say as the root user. So let's just echo those again. So they don't actually exist now because of the way that sudo works. Let's try minus E. It's worth checking them. So now they're there because we passed the minus E variable. And you can see it's retained the environment. So they both exist in the root. So that's essential to do. Check them when, once you've um, become the root user, however you do it. And now we can paste that in again. So if we now check that file to make sure it appears as we expect it to appear. So yes, that's good. It's setting up the first environment variable to our prefix and second config one to the default config, config options and it's exporting both of those into the environment. So that's all good. Um, if you've installed the sudo package, um, ensure that XOR prefix and config are also available in the, in the sudo environment. So this is making it um, a little bit more robust in the fact that these environment variables will be available when we um, uh, become sudo. So let's try doing sudo su by itself, echo dollar xorg. So yes, that, that uh, last command we did to add them to the environment for the sudoers has actually worked now because we've got the xorg uh, environment variables suddenly appearing, whereas previously when I tried this, as you can see, it didn't work at all. They didn't exist, so that's that's just making things a little bit more robust, less likely to fail, because if these aren't set, then A, uh, the incorrect options are going to be set for the configure, and B, when we install, they're going to be put into the wrong place, probably off the root directory, because the prefix will be unset. If you're not using the standard XOR prefix, um, it says if you've decided to use a standard user prefix, you must omit the remainder of this page and continue at util macros. Oh, sorry, if you've decided to use the user prefix, you must omit the remainder of this page. Okay, so the rest of this page is just for basically fixing up the different prefix. So this could be another reason why they recommend to use the user prefix. Um, it's kind of getting a bit hacky to use any other prefix because you're having to set all these extra variables. Um, some more configuration. Yes, that's the old version there, X11R6. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit hacky to use anything other than user, the user prefix. So I can see now why they are recommending user. So as it said, we're going to move straight on to um, util macros. 
which is the first package we're going to be building. So let me go back to sources BLFS and straight away we're going to use wget to fetch the first package. So a lot of these, like I say, are small, but there's occasionally one where it's got a dependency that will be um, quite a bit of building before we return back to Xorg. So the requirement is the Xorg build, build environment, which we've just set up. Um, again, it's worth checking. We've got those two environment variables set, so that's okay. So let's extract util macros. As you can see, it's a tiny package configure with that environment variable to pass those options in and as a root user well as you've seen we can do sudo on its own we don't need to do minus e in this case although it might be worth getting into the habit of using sudo minus e and you can see it's installed it into user so that's worked correctly and let me just try it without the e to prove that it will work and you can see again it's installed everything into user so that's fine so that's util macros right my spreadsheet's not up so let me just get that up so i can update it Right, so that's your tool macros. Put that in, and we can move on to XORG Proto. So let's copy this one in. I know we've got other options here. Okay, there's so a reciprocal dependency with FOP 2.9. So we are going to install FOP. I seem to remember, or did we install it? Let me have a search on my list of packages I've installed. Oh, yes, we need to install it because XMLTO needs to be reinstalled after FOP. So um, you'll need to reinstall the protocol headers after the installation is complete and FOP has been installed. Okay. And we can install ASCII doc. That also needs FOP. Okay, so let me copy this in to the spreadsheet and put a point there that needs to be rebuilt after FOP. And I'll also put in that uh, let's just have a look at ASCII doc again. So that needs FOP as well. And the optional runtime. Okay, so we can do ASCII doc now actually. Things that's only a runtime. So let's fetch that next. Build the module. There's no test suite, so we just install it with this single command, and that's done. So that was ASCII doc. OK, 
Okay, so now we can build XOR Proto. Uh, actually, let's. I'll just put this in the wrong order on my spreadsheet, so I'll just make sure I've done that correctly. Sorry, no, not Xorg Proto. It's ASCII doc is the one I want. That's better. Okay. So, fetch this. Oh, let's tidy up first. equals true source legacy editors need my old programs such as less tiff and that's not in the BLFS but the looks of it no so it probably won't be installing that I'll just copy and paste these commands as they are so that's done So now it will install as the root user. Okay, that's done. So now move on to libxau. No dependencies apart from what we've already built. Configure and make. check that's all good and I can stall Okay, so libxdmcp. So again, this has got FOP as an option. Um, although it is optional, um, it is for producing documentation, which can be useful. Um, although I don't know if it actually needs for the documentation all four of these or if this is just another optional um, package. Um, but I'll install it anyway, just for the record. So copy link. Download that. Let's put this in and put a note to rebuild after FOP. So configure and make. Make check, that's all good. And make install, that's done. So 
So XCB Proto. So we've got a LibMXML2 we've already installed so we can run the test. So let's let me copy this to my spreadsheet. Copy the link address. Build it with this command or configure it with this command. Test it and install. So if you're upgrading from version 1.15 or lower, the old package config file needs to be removed. We're not upgrading, it's a brand new installation, so we don't need to do that. And now we move on to libxcb. We've got all the dependencies that we want. Not going to bother about API documentation. So if you have got Doxygen installed, you need to remove that without Doxygen switch. Otherwise, just copy and paste that. That one code, it can't encode character and position. Right, now I've had this before, I think. I have a feeling it's because I'm not using a UTF-8 character set, as I remember. Let's see what that error puts in, or what it comes back with on a search. Yeah, and it's UTF-8, that's what it is. Um, so what I think I need to do is to go to the Linux from scratch 12 book. Um, read online and Need to go to GLIPC, is it? I think. Yeah, I think we need to add. Oh, did I? Uh, let's have a look. I can't remember what. Yeah, the cows have got installed. That's the file I think I need to look at to tell me what locales are installed. Let's see what that comes. Oh no, that's not it. Right, let me do a reset there in case that's cocked up the. Um, now I'm not sure how you view on Gen 2, there's a tool to do this. Um, on the looks from scratch, I'm not sure. I 
right names of all available locales. Let's try that one. Oh yes, this looks like it's it. Yeah, these are the ones that are installed. So I need an ENGB. So I need to set the locale to that option there at the moment. Um, will it be laying with it? Yeah, so I wonder if I... I'm not sure which part failed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this again. In fact, I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to edit the profile. Um, where was it? No, it was the i18n file yeah i'm going to actually override that i can't as a, as an ordinary user and export lang equals en underscore gb dot utf8 um because i'll get the similar problem in gen 2 which is the distribution I normally use with some packages failing because there's not a UTF-8 environment um, set up. So I'll actually come out of this and log in afresh rather than source, just make sure everything's properly set up as it would be with a fresh login. Yeah, so let's go to sources, BLFS, Uh, XCB, lib XCB, and try try each of these at once just to see if there's any failure. And if there is, I can I know which which command caused the failure. So that one passed. So let's now run make. Yes, it's working now. That's that's what the problem is. So I'll leave that UTF-8 in because I'm, I'm pretty sure this won't be the only package that um, will display this problem. So now let's do some tests. That's OK. And install. Uh, Okay, and if the package was built as a non-root user, then the installed documentation is now owned by this root user, so it was. So we need to change the ownership of the documentation um, as the root user. And yeah, you can see it's changed from kernel text to root root there. So that's libxcb done. Org libraries. So this needs font config, which I've already installed, I believe, for Grub, was it? Oh no, that was free type, sorry, not font, font config. Right, so we need to install that. And this has got a rebuild requirement for FOP 2.9 as well. So I'll paste that in to rebuild into my list. There's going to be quite a few rebuilds, but this always happens. Let's have a look at font config. This is a requirement, so we can't get away with this. Bubble wrap. Now, there was something about bubble wrap on the errata, wasn't there? Uh... Oh, it does actually say here about libxcb can fail to build with certain locale settings. If this happens, use lc all equals enus utf8 make instead of the make command to work around. Okay, so it doesn't need to be a permanent thing by the looks of it, and it is only libxcb. 
But as you saw, the NGB, I think it's the UTF-8 part that matters. So if you've got a locale with the UTF-8 as well, then you could probably use that. And if it doesn't, then use the NUS. Um, oh, here's the bubble wrap in Web GT, WebKit GTK. Okay. Right, okay. So it's not this particular part we're interested in. Um... So it requires free type. Now this is the one I did install for <clears throat> for Grub. Let's have a quick nosy at that. <clears throat> so that needs half buzz. And that's got a load of dependencies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave free type as it is at the moment. Um, it's installed. It's not completely installed. Um, I've got a note to reinstall free type after half buzz um, so we can do that later when half buzz and, and its dependencies have been installed um, bubble wrap used by some tests so that's probably going to be a good thing let's see what dependencies that needs so i don't think we've got that one let's have a look at that yeah i think we can get that one done so let's pull that one into the tabs. We've got libxslt, libsec, comp. Pretty sure we haven't done that. Curl, I think that's got quite a few dependencies. Um, but again, we can install that now and reinstall it at a later point. So I'll pull that one in. Unzip we've got. Uh, let's have a look at this JSON C. That needs C make. So that's got quite a few dependencies. So we'll leave that out at the moment. Uh, text live, we're probably not going to do. Um, so what I might do is just put a note to rebuild font config after JSON and curl, but I'll install curl now anyway. Uh, or shall I? Um, what shall I do? I think curl, well, curl's needed by other packages. Um, so it could be something we could use. Uh, let's have another look. Yeah, there's quite a lot there. We're going to be installing Samba. Yeah, I think I'll leave it for now. Um, I'll just install bubble wrap. So font config rebuild after um, curl and JSON C. So let's start with libsep comp. Okay, so this is quite straightforward. Okay, now let's do some tests.
Right, so that took quite a lot longer than I thought it would do, but it's finished, um, and more importantly, it's all passed. Now, I did notice, I was monitoring that on another uh, terminal, I noticed it was only running on one core, so I'm not sure if it would run on more than one core, so I'm just going to try that to see how... Right, it looks like it's running on seven cores at the moment from what I can see, so um, it's not running at 100% either, so maybe it's just limited internally, and it certainly doesn't look like it's going any faster, so that's a bit unfortunate. Okay, but anyway, we've got a pass with that, so now I'm just going to install it, and it's done. Put that one into the spreadsheet and close that down and we've tidied it up. So next is bubble wrap. There's no extra options to look at. Uh, so we'll just build this. Oops, not like that, like that. And that looks like that's done. That was quick. So now I've got a said. And we can run some tests as a user other than the root user. Um, so I don't know why these have skipped, but the one it did test passed anyway, so that's okay. And we can install it. And that's done. So it looks like it says when this package began upstream, expected it could be installed as SUID root. That was a long time ago. SUID root is generally considered a bad idea as well as the default namespaces this package requires the optional user namespace to be enabled if it's not been enabled to select the following options so i have a feeling that most of the namespaces are installed by default which is what i used to build this kernel as a default config so let's tidy that up let's do a zcat proc config grep for user ns okay it's not set unfortunately so i'm gonna to have to go into the kernel and rebuild it so we need to go back one to linux and do make menu config um, as the root General setup, namespace support, which is near the bottom, I think. Yep, there it is. Oh, funny enough, they're all set except for the user one, so I, I was right, my memory was right, but uh, I didn't know which one wasn't set. So that's set. Save it, yep. Make. So this may well possibly build yes it looks like it is building quite a lot of the kernel so this is going to be a minute or two
Right, so that's built. I'm going to mount the boot partition. And I'm not sure if I've got the... No, I haven't, so I'm going to have to copy arch um, x86 underscore 64 BZ image to the boot VM Linux and CP system map to boot system dot map and dot config to boot config and make modules install uh. oh have I just overwritten the config file there relief okay right that all looks good so I need to come out of this 